There is no power, no might, no movement, no might except by Allah. What is the meaning of this statement? Shaykh al Fawzan, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he says, La hawl, la hawla. What is the meaning of hawla? Meaning, La tahawl min halin ila hal. This means that there isn't movement from one state to another state. From one condition to another condition. From one being, from form of being or state of being to another form of being. Meaning that all movement that we see, all action that we see, all the transformation and change that we see from one state to another state. All of this does not take place except by Allah. Except by Allah and through His aid. And likewise, there is no power. There is no power except the power of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, when a person accepts this and acknowledges this, that in the whole universe there is no hawl, there is no movement, there is no power except by that of Allah, then this means that really he is making taslim, he is freeing from himself any claim of having any you know, independent power or might or ability or whatever, you know, he's resigning himself to the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the meaning of this is that he never becomes amazed with himself. So this statement, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, is a means of removing amazement from oneself, becoming amazed with oneself, thinking that one has, for example, you know, ability and strength and power and intelligence and so on and so forth, by which a person believes that he is, you know, attaining whatever he is attaining of wealth and riches and whatever else. When he says, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, it is denying from himself this ability and power and, you know, this amazement that a person becomes amazed from himself. Rather, he's returning all affairs back to Allah Azza wa Jal. And so, in turn, this also means that we seek aid and assistance from Allah. It makes a person needy and dependent upon Allah in that it leads him to make isti'ana. You make isti'ana from Allah. You seek aid from Allah. And so therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who aids you upon obedience and who changes you from a state of disobedience to obedience. He's the one who makes that, that movement uh, upon you. And from kufr to Islam, from disbelief to Islam. So everything is through the hawl of Allah, through the might and the power. Right? It is Allah the one who makes things move in that manner. A servant from disobedience to obedience, from kufr to Islam, from uh, you know, from, from shirk to tawheed, from disbelief to iman and so on and so forth. Allah is the one. All of this is through the hawl and the quwwah, the, 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 the might and the power, the movement, which is brought, away, brought about by way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had entrusted you and left you to yourself, then you would not have been able. And if you basically made all efforts, every effort, and you tried to earn or, you know, to seek wealth and whatever else, this effort and this tiredness would be from you. This would, this would be from you. But the tawfiq, granting success, and putting blessing in that effort of yours, that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So when we say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, then all of these points that are being mentioned by the Shaykh, this, this is basically the meaning of, of that statement. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So now, obviously, what is the, what is the, 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 the context of this statement in, in the speech of At-Tahawi? Then he's simply saying that you know, there is no person who moves to disobedience or who moves to obedience except that it is by the hawl and the quwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything is by, by Allah. There is no movement, no power except by way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whether it, that is in disobedience or whether that is in obedience, whether it's you know, in terms of the actions of the servants, right? The actions of the servants are either obedience or disobedience. 
right? Whether it's in relation to them, or whether it is in relation to any of the other events that take place in the heavens and the earth, of, for example, the movement of the wind, right? The, uh, you know, the, the rain, and all of the other phenomena that, that, that take place, the movement of the sun, the movement of the moon, the alternation of night and the day, and everything else, all of those physical asbab, the ways and means, nothing is except by the hawl and the quwa, the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so therefore that has some implications as we see uh, in the statement of Sheikh uh, Salih al-Fawzan, that we relinquish any in independent power and might. It makes us humble, it makes us realize that we seek aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we realize that our own efforts in themselves Although the we, we might strive and you know, tie ourselves, the tawfiq ultimately comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, uh, Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan, he continues to comment that, upon the statement of al-Tahawi, that no matter how much we strive in using the ways and the means, the asbab, adopting the ways and the means, because... In this creation, Allah has decreed asbab, as we mentioned, the ways and the means for everything. There are ways and means of acquiring wealth, a ways of means of acquiring uh, sustenance, a ways and means of attaining offspring, children. Uh, the, there are ways and means of everything, for everything. And so no matter how much we strive in taking these ways and means, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not decreed the effect if he has not decreed the end result, then it will not benefit you. For you taking the ways and means, those ways and means will not benefit you. Now, to give an, to give an illustration of this, uh, to give an example of this, what this means, um, a person, for example, might uh, set out on a journey, and in order to save himself and be secure, he takes all of the ways and means to make sure that journey is safe. So, for example... He might decide to travel during the day. He might decide to check his vehicle, uh, check the tire pressure on everything. He will check the water, he will check the oil. Uh, when he drives, he will basically uh, confine himself to, the, to the, the national speed limits on every road. He will wear the seat belt. Uh, he will you know, keep his eyes on the mirrors and everything, checking the rear, checking the everything. So he will take all of the ways and means and drive safely and carefully, but you know, even though he's taken every means possible, it could be that from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there could be someone on the other lane, on the other side, from the other direction, you know, falls asleep in a truck, for example, and it just comes over the barrier and smashes into him and, and he dies. Even though he took every single way and means possible in order to, you know, ensure that he will be safe. This means that no matter how many of the asbab you take, the ways and means, the affairs are still in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of your actions will only benefit you if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed benefit for you. Now this means, now this does not mean that you don't take the ways and means. It means that you must take the ways and means. Because taking the ways and means are part and parcel of achieving the effect of reaching the goal. The ways and means are part and parcel of reaching the goal. Now a person shouldn't think, for example, in the example which I gave, that well, if Allah has decreed for me to be killed in the journey and not be safe, then there's no point in me checking the oil, checking the tires, checking the pressure, you know, uh, driving, keeping to the national speed limit. There's no point in me doing that because if I'm going to die, I'm going to die anyway. Uh, this is the wrong way of thinking. It is faulty thinking. It is stupid thinking. Uh, it's just like a person saying, as we've mentioned before, that a person says, well, if Allah has decreed that I'm going to be full and not hungry, then there's no point in me eating. What's the need to eat then in that case, if I'm going to be hungry? If Allah is going to make me not thirsty, what's the point in me not what's the point in me drinking water because I'm going to be thirsty, I'm not going to be thirsty anyway. Right? But this is incorrect because Allah's qadr, Allah's qada, everything in the creation is by way of the decree of Allah, which includes the asbab. So if Allah decreed for you not to be hungry, then it is through way of food that you will not be hungry. 
If Allah has decreed for you to have children, then it will be through marriage and marital relations that you will have children. Right? This is a part, the asbab, a part and parcel of the, the creation and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this means that we must take the ways and means. We must adopt the ways and means. But that does not mean that the ways and means in themselves will always bring, will, will bring about the, 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 the effects or the goals. Because that is in the hand and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the tawfiq, as the shaykh says here, what tawfiq ala Allah. The success in all of that is with Allah. You are simply commanded to use the ways and the means. You are commanded to adopt the ways and the means. Now here the ways and the means are both religious and they are worldly. The examples I gave are the worldly examples of how we achieve goals. But likewise, if you want to achieve paradise, you have to take the ways and the means. And that is acting by the sharia. Acting you know, by what the messengers uh, brought. So if you perform the asbab, if you perform the asbab, you obey Allah, you establish the pillars, you establish the prayers, you keep away from disobedience and, and so on and so forth, you stick to right guidance, then the, these, these, this, this is all from the asbab that play a part in you entering paradise. Not that they will on their own lead you to paradise. Why? Because we know it is Allah's mercy as well, along with the asbab that will cause you to enter the, uh, you know, the, the, it is Allah's mercy first and foremost, but also the asbab uh, are a means, uh, but it is Allah's mercy first and foremost by which you enter paradise. So, um, then we have the statement of uh, 